be talking about acids and bases, and acids and bases play a vital role in our everyday lives. We don't really realize it too often, but the acidity and basicity of the soil is extremely important for crops and for trees and for grass to grow. The acidity and basicity of the ocean is also very important to marine life. And it, actually, that's under assault right now with ocean acidification, which we'll talk more about later. And the acidity and basicity of the human body is very important to life. In fact, to all organisms, it's important to life. If the acidity goes down too much or the basicity goes up just a little too much, that's it. Life is over. So we owe our life and the planet to acids and bases. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what acids and bases actually are. And in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to start with acids. And I'm going to draw a beaker. So this is going to be my beaker. And I'm going to fill this beaker with some hydrogen chloride. So I'm going to write HCl, HCl. There's lots of hydrogen chloride molecules in here. I'm just going to draw five, but in real life there's gazillions of them floating around in this solution. So there's a solution of hydrogen chloride. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this hydrogen chloride solution and we're going to add water to it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that in blue. I'm going to add some water to this solution. And when I add water to the solution, the solution is going to become an acid. And the reason that is, is because the water is going to break apart the hydrogen and the chlorine atom from each other. It's going to break that chemical bond. But it's not going to break it evenly. There's going to be an unequal uh, distribution of electrons. And what's going to happen is the hydrogen is going to end up losing an electron. And it's going to become a positive hydrogen ion. And we're going to have lots of these hydrogen ions floating around in solution. And the chlorine atom is then going to end up gaining that electron. So it's going to take on a negative charge. So I'm going to have lots of chlorine ions floating around here also. Now don't forget, water is also here, also in here, floating around. So I'll put some water molecules in here. And this is a solution of hydrochloric acid. Now what actually makes an acid an acid? And the answer is this guy right here, this hydrogen ion. This is the acid part of an acid. So we'll go ahead and write that down. Acid part of an acid. And different types of acids are made by different ions. For example, this one is a hydrochloric acid because of this chlorine ion. But different ions create different acids. But what do all acids have in common? They have these hydrogen ions. And the more of these hydrogen ions that are present in a given volume of solution, the more acidic that solution is going to be. So again, the more hydrogen ions you have, another name for a hydrogen ion is a proton, but the more of these hydrogen ions you have, the more acidic your solution is going to be. Because this is the acid part of an acid. Now, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about bases. And I'm going to draw the same thing again. I'm going to go ahead and erase this. And I'm also going to use a beaker for my base. So I'm going to draw another beaker. And in this beaker, we're going to put sodium hydroxide, NaOH. Lots of sodium hydroxide. And this oftentimes comes in little uh, solid pellets. So I've got a beaker of sodium hydroxide. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add water to this beaker. And when we add water to the beaker, the water is going to break some chemical bonds. There we go. And the water 
is going to break the chemical bond between the sodium and the oxygen. Again, it's going to break that bond unevenly. So we're going to end up with sodium ions, positively charged sodium ions, and a negative hydroxide ion. And we're going to have lots of these floating around in this solution. Now along with that, we're going to have water molecules floating around here also. Because this is all in a solution of water. So what makes that a base? Well it turns out what makes this a base is the hydroxide ion. This is a polyatomic ion. It consists of an oxygen bonded to a hydrogen atom and it's got an additional electron as part of it. So this hydroxide ion is the base part of a base. So let's write that down. This hydroxide ion, it has an E on the end of it, hydroxide ion is the base part of a base, you know, a base solution. And again, different basic solutions have different ions here, different cations. But what do all basic solutions have in common? They have these hydroxide ions. And the more of these hydroxide ions you have in a given volume of solution, the more basic that solution is going to be. Now, how do we measure acids and bases? What type of scale do we use to measure acids and bases. We're going to use a pH scale. So let's go ahead, we'll draw a pH scale. Pretty easy, just a straight line. And the pH scale is going to go from 0 to 14, with 7 being neutral. Now, anything less than 7 is going to be acidic. So let's go ahead and write that down. Anything less than 7 is going to be acidic. It's going to be an acid. And anything greater than 7 is going to be a base. It's going to be basic. Now let's go ahead and write the rest of our numbers in there. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I'm going to go ahead and write these down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that's our pH scale. And the further we go to the left, the lower the number, the more acidic our solution is going to be. And the higher the number, the more basic our solution is going to be. So just to give you a feel for some of these common acids and bases, let's start at around a 2. As we see this in our everyday life, what has a pH, and by the way, this is a P, lowercase p, uppercase h scale. It's a pH scale, power of the hydrogen ion. It's a measure of the acidity or basicity of a solution. That's what this is. And right around 2, we have stomach acid. So stomach acid, very acidic. If you've ever uh, burped up some stomach acid and got that into your esophagus, you know that it burns. It's very acidic. Also, lemons have a pH of 2. Lemons are extremely acidic. In fact, if you take lemons and you like to just eat lemons, and some people do, they're not going to have teeth for that long because that acid is going to eat the enamel right off of their teeth. So if you want to consume lemons, Put a little bit of lemon juice on fish, put a little bit of lemon juice into water so it gets diluted down. You do not want to eat raw lemons on a regular basis because you won't have any teeth left in your mouth. Now, pH of around 5. OJ, orange juice, around 5. 7 is going to be water. Now I'm talking about just pure water, distilled water, nothing else, no other minerals, no other chloride. Uh, ions, no other magnesium or calcium ions floating around, just pure distilled water. So if you've ever gone to public supermarket 
and you've seen the distilled water, it has a pH of about 7. That's perfectly uh, neutral water. 8 is going to be seawater. So we're talking about the ocean here. Seawater is slightly basic because that water typically uh, runs off the land and picks up basic ions before it goes into a lake or a pond or, uh, or the ocean. So seawater tends to be slightly basic. And then right around, uh, actually let's go back just a little bit, around 7.4, I wanted to make a note of this, around 7.4, right here, this is going to be blood, 7.4. This is the pH of your body fluids, and it's a very, very narrow pH. If this goes down a couple tenths, or up a couple tenths, that's it. You go into a coma and you die. Your pH has to stay within a very narrow range for your cells to work properly. So let's remember that. pH of 7.4. Again, seawater is slightly basic. It's 8. And moving on, an 11, that is ammonia. So where do you find ammonia? Well, if you go to the store and you see Windex that cleans windows, sometimes Oftentimes they'll add ammonia to that, and that smell of Windex, that strong smell is ammonia. Uh, ammonia is also going to be found as a waste product in your urine, a little bit of ammonia, because your cells produce that ammonia. That's a, uh, a waste product, a metabolic waste product of your cells from the breakdown of proteins and nucleic acids. And finally, let's go all the way out to 13, and 13 is going to be bleach. That's why you want to be very careful around bleach. You get so much as a little drop of this in your eye, and it is going to burn and cause big problems. Or if you get this on your hands and you don't wash your hands, very quickly you're going to end up with a, a burn, a rash on your hands. This stuff is very strong. A strong base is just as bad as a strong acid. Now the last thing I want to talk about here is strengths of acids and bases. This is a pH scale. The pH scale is logarithmic, just like the earthquake scale, like the Richter scale for earthquakes. It's a logarithmic scale. So what does that mean to be a logarithmic scale? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to erase this up here so I can do a little bit of writing. But it's a logarithmic scale. What does that mean? So if we consider pH of 4 and a pH of 5, Right? How much more acidic is a pH of 4 compared to a pH of 5? 10 times, because it's logarithmic scale, 10 times more acidic. How many times more acidic is a pH of 3 compared to a pH of 4? 10 times. Now here's a question. How many more times acidic is a 3 compared to a solution that has a pH of 5? Well, because it's logarithmic, you actually multiply those numbers. So a solution that has a pH of 3 is 100 times more acidic than a pH of 5. And if we continue this train of thought, how many more times acidic is a, pH, a solution of pH 2 compared to a solution of pH 5? 10 times 10 times 10. A thousand times more acidic. Now the same thing applies to earthquakes also. If you've got an earthquake of magnitude 8 compared to 7, the 8 is 10 times greater than 7. What about a 9 compared to a 7? 10 times 10, that's 100 times greater. So it builds really quick. That's the power of a logarithmic scale. And that's the power of the pH scale. And that's going to be it for acids and bases.